lovelies welcome back to my youtube channel it's time for reviews and recaps let's get into it so we're finally at the ready to love finale um i hope it was everything you expected and more if you have not watched it then enjoy this recap with me and if you then if you watched it as well let's just get into it let's have a chat about my overall thoughts about this episode and let me know in the comment section below um if you agree or disagree with anything that I've said about the finale and the cast members and all of that let's just get into it okay so this episode started with the branch um with all of the finalists and it was all of the people who have decided to stay until the very very end it was Dakia, Paul, Carmen, Donovan and Mr. Clifton and Joy so they were all the finalists and so Dakia, of course was expressing how she hopes that the branch is not as eventful as the last one I'm sure you guys remember how Carmen and Dakia went back and forth at the last branch and how it was a mess with Sabrina and um, Donovan getting into it. it. The whole thing just sounded like it was a brawl, okay? So, of course, I'm not shocked that Dakia was hoping that the branch was not as eventful as the last one. I would I felt the same exact way if I was there. Anyways, Dakia talked about how she and Paul have a good chemistry and a good connection. But she wants to see if there is anything there romantically. Clifton and Carmen were talking at the branch. It sounds like it sounds like they have a decent relationship, just like a friendly relationship. It was like just two friends catching up. Um it seems that Carmen gets along very well with the guys, but does not get along very well with women because she sees women as competition. My thoughts, my opinion. You can disagree with that in the comment section below if you want to. But I think I'm right on this one. <laughs> Anyways, or are we going to blame editing for the way Carmen has behaved and the way she's spoken about all the women, other women on the show? Or... Are we going to actually see maybe perhaps um, Carmen has relationships with men, um, but is unable to form solid relationships with women she sees as competition. Anyways, that's story for another day. Anyway, so Clifton and Carmen were talking about everything. The first thing I noticed was Carmen was not wearing our ugly ass contact lenses. I think they were blue. They just looked weird. I'm glad she got rid of them because she actually looks pretty without them and and the color just wasn't working for her skin it just made her look weird um so i'm glad she finally got rid of those contact lenses she actually looks really pretty i would say anyway so it sounded like the everyone was just talking about their connections um donovan and joy were having a chat about joy's connection with clifton so it sounds like the whole cast mates are very cordial. And one of the things I have heard about Ready to Love um, is that most people end up with friends. And so I'm not surprised at all because the way they were interacting, it does seem like all of them are sort of, um, they have sort of built a bond, um, so to speak. Of course, Uncle Tommy walks in and starts saying that, you know, we're at the benedictions and that it's now time for the ladies to introduce the men to their family. And I was like, OK, cool, fair enough. And then he, of course, he talks about how, you know, meeting someone's family should never be taken lightly. I totally agree. I think it's so important. The first impression that you make. So I would say just, you know, bear that in mind and be careful and. You know, just, just bear that in mind when you're meeting your spouse's family, really. And if you are thinking of who to take lessons from, take it from Carmen. She knows how to dress up. She knows how to handle herself when she's meeting family. You can just tell. And seeing her parents, I now see why she knows how to handle herself in different sin in situations and scenarios. Anyways, at this point, Paul started talking about how he's feeling... Um, different essentially you know there's no more process he's looking forward to meeting Dakia's family and then they showed us Carmen's family so Carmen has a mother who's a preacher 
and Carmen's dad is ex-military. Interesting combination. I actually didn't expect Carmen's parents to be those people. I don't know who or what I was expecting, but I didn't expect her parents to be those sort of people. She has interesting parents. I like her parents. Um... Carmen was basically trying to tell her dad, you know, before the dates with Donovan, like, you know, woosa. And dad was basically like, well, you've got to feed me for me to woosa. I'm like, all right, daddy. Okay. And then the mom was just like, you know, if he's in it for whatever, that's not going to work for me. And that's not going to work for God. I'm like, okay, mother. Like, all right, come through with the good energy, with the, with the, you know, I'm looking out, I'm protecting my daughter energy. Uh, so I really like that. And so Mr. Donovan walked in with flowers. I thought that was cute. He handed the flower over to um, Carmen's mom and, you know, hugged them, which I thought was nice as well. Carmen's father asked some good questions like what do you guys actually think like Carmen's father essentially asked you know whether he had kids they were with multiple baby mothers so asked whether Carmen would be able to discipline his children which I was like interesting question that's a very very important question especially as a step parent you need to be able to discipline you know the other child um and it's it's a very tricky situation really donovan did say that his children are well behaved but i'm sure everyone says that about their children and nine out of ten their children are not but hopefully donovan's kids are well behaved i don't know those kids so i'm not speaking on that i'm just saying um but essentially is a very important point and i think if you're dating anyone who has children then those are the sort of questions you should be asking him as well so there is much to be learned from carmen's dad actually anyway so they started talking about donovan's feelings in his past marriage and his previous marriage and donovan confessed that there was a time he stepped out during his marriage and i'm like da -da 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 -da, red flag um, and of course, you know, people cheat and, you know, they go on to not cheat again in new marriages or whatever. But it's the root cause has to be dealt with and full accountability has to be taken by that person in question. And so, of course, I would hope that it it would be a source of concern for Carmen because everyone can see they've changed. But have you truly changed? That is something that, you know, is needs to be seen, essentially. And Carmen's dad asked a really good question. Like, how do I know that you wouldn't cheat on Carmen? And I think that's such an important point. I don't know if Donovan was able to answer that question quite well to my you know in my opinion but donovan did say that he just feels like as long as he and carmen has that trust there's no reason for him to break that trust at this point he feels like if he has to do that he'll just walk away instead and i'm like mm, okay fair enough then carmen's mom was like you know she had been observing donovan and asked if donovan had a relationship with jesus christ and donovan was like you know he's not religious she's like that's not what i asked you i want to know what your faith is um essentially donovan basically said he believes in god um but that was pretty much it he's not religious but he's spiritual i'm like i would have hoped she would have gotten clarity on it and perhaps she did but that was edited out which could likely be the case but what the mom was saying is you know if god is at your center then she's cool with the relationship emma proceeded to tell mr donovan that he has the most affectionate smile i'm like okay mama do you want donovan for yourself or what all in all though it sounded like they had a really good conversation like mom basically told carmen that you know she felt like he would give her the best of the best dad was like well you know he has a lot of potential and you know we're behind whatever you want to do a hundred percent but yeah it, it just sounded like they they just seemed lovely i actually like carmen's parents is that weird i'm not a fan of carmen herself but i like her parents anyways i remember dating a guy once i liked his mom i loved his mom but you know he was crazy but yeah anyways that's by the way 
So on the other hand, Clifton met Joy's sister. So Joy's sister and Joy were having a little chat before Clifton walked in. And Joy's sister was basically saying that, you know, she's never been, she hasn't been in a relationship in a while, blah, blah, blah. And it was just funny just listening to them talk talk about it and just seeing the similarities between them. I guess because they come from the same household. I'm not surprised at all. Then Mr. Clifton, old big old teddy bear, walked in with that red and black checkered shirt around his waist. I wasn't sure what that was about, but yeah, I was not feeling that outfit. Anyway, so her and Joy's sister, um, he and Joy's sister talked about Joy's career requiring her to travel. You know, how does Clifton feel about that? Of of course, Clifton said what he's always said. You know, he's he feels like it's going to be hard, but as long as there's togetherness, they'll be all right. I do think that Clifton is very concerned. I do not think Clifton does very well with long distance relationships, and I think it's very evident in the way he talks about it, and he his face when he talks about it. So even if I don't know if he's being completely honest as to where he stands, but I think that I don't know if they would have much of a relationship once she moves away. If I'm being completely honest, Clifton seems like a when I'm in your face, I'm present. When I'm not, I'm not. Sort of person. Now I may be wrong, but that's the impression I get. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. So it seems like Clifton and Clifton sis and Joy's sister got along quite well. But I think Joy's sister also picked up on Clifton's hesitations when it comes to Joy's travels um, and long distance relationships. And Joy practically started crying when her and her sister were having a chat after Clifton had left. Um, when they were talking about the distance and it sounds like joy has found everything that she wants in a man in clifton and she's just so sad that distance has just had to ruin it because in a way i think deep down in her gut she knows that the relationship is likely to end because of the distance because clifton is probably going to be unable to handle the distance i think deep down she knows this or do you guys think I'm being harsh? Let me know in the comment section. It could be that you guys have different opinions regarding this. But I personally just think, yeah, I think it's going to be done soon. On the other side, Paul was meeting Dakia's mom and her brother. Dakia's brother was like, you're a little old. I'm like, oh, goodness me. Because it turns out Paul has twin girls that are 28 and no 27 and the kia's brother is 27 so it's like paul has grown ass children that are practically the kia's little brother's age so that's that that's a little way weird i would say anyway the kia's mom was like i'm not letting my my kid date no broke man i need to know that he is good with his finances she asked him about his credits and mr Paul was very, very clear that he has no blemishes on his credit and he has 800 credit score. I'm like, all right, Mr. Paul. All right. Paul basically asked whether Dickie had ever been in a relationship that she should have bailed out of. And it was interesting. Both of them looked at each other and said no. So it sounds like Dickie makes decent choices when it comes to men. Dikia said, you know, if it ain't going to work, she bails out real quick. And I can relate to that. I'm not that kind of person that stays in things that I feel like it's not going to work. Um, so, yeah. Can I just say, the the hug that Dikia gave Paul when Paul was leaving was interesting. It wasn't affectionate at all. It was like a little pat that you give, like, your friend that you're not really attracted to, that he's trying to move to you kind of hug so i don't think dakia likes him like that i don't think she feels any romantic connection towards him at all after paul left dakia's mom essentially told dakia that he will make a good husband i guess dakia's brother and dakia were just not sure about her connection with him i don't know if dakia was trying to build a suspense but she was basically saying that she was unsure about what was going to happen i'm like girl you know you ain't going to choose that man I don't know what you're acting like. You know you ain't going to choose that man, I beg. 
Anyways, after that, Clifton and Joy met up for a date. Um, and they were just talking about the meetup with the sister. And Clifton was talking about how he had a lot of fun meeting her sister. He loves her, her energy. And that she made him feel at home. I could definitely feel that. I think Joy and her sister have really good energies. And I, I think that just translates to our screens, you know. Joy basically brought up the fact that her sister had some concerns about the distance. Clifton also expressed that, you know, he had some anxiety about Joy leaving. Um, and then in his confessionals, it was talking about, you know, distance makes the heart grow fonder or it could go away completely. Um, I think they both know that distance is an issue. Um, it sucks to be honest, but I think they both sort of know distance is going to be an issue. Also, Joy said in her confessional that if anything happens and the ball drops, it wouldn't be from her. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Girl is giving us some heads up because I feel like deep down in her gut, she knows it is not going to work because Clifton will drop the ball because he would not be able to handle the distance. I think that's just what it is. After that, they started talking about sex. It sounds like they both want to get down like tonight, you know? Clifton and Joy. Joy was saying, you know, it's been a dry, dry process. And then Clifton was like, you know, you've got to be open to the process. I'm like, Clifton, I, I I don't know what you guys are talking about on my screens. But you guys better go and get a room, please. And leave the rest of us out of this mess. So, of course, now the final moment where everyone chooses what they want to do and who they want to go ahead with. Um, so Clifton and Joy, of course, they had their little moment where Clifton said, you have been my day one. My heart has always been set on you since day one. I'm like, okay, honey. Okay. He talked about choosing her and hoping that she chooses him as well. And then he had this little cute thing. It was like a little cardboard paper saying, Choo- um, you know, will you date me? circle yes or no um choose me circle yes or no um girl joy underlined i'm like this is how you guys feel exams he said circle he didn't say underline but okay but you know i'm just pedantic what can i say anyways my my thoughts about joy and clifton joy seems invested Clifton does not seem as invested joy seems like she's in awe of him but I do not think Clifton looks at her in the same way. Now, I know that he likes her, but I feel like Joy is practically in feelings, in like, in almost in love with Clifton. Legit. The way she looks at him, the way she looks at him with such tenderness. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just going along with it. I don't get the impression they're going to be solid. I think they will probably continue for a little while. And then Mr. Clifton is going to bail out because I don't get the impression he's going to be able to hack the distance. I said what I said. Feel free to disagree with me in the comment section below. I love hearing you guys' opinions about things. So, you know, even if it's different from what I say on this channel, I want you guys to feel comfortable enough to let me know in the comment section below um, exactly what you think. And yeah, let's let's do it that way. So they chose each other. And so now it was Dakia and Paul. So essentially, Paul gave Dakia flowers. They hugged. Paul said some sweet things about Dakia. Paul said that his decision was to choose himself. I'm like, okay, Paul. And then Dakia, of course, said her decision is to choose herself. I'm like, okay, guys, so you guys could have chosen yourselves before this moment because you both know or you both knew from day one that you guys were not a solid connection and you guys were just messing with us. So I don't understand, but whatever. You guys wanted to stay till the end. You guys stayed till the end and yeah, chose yourselves. All right, then I choose myself too. And you guys shouldn't have wasted my time anyways over 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 there to carmen and donovan 
Donovan had a little speech about choosing Carmen. I felt the speech was dry. If you guys want to go back and listen to it, go back and listen to it. I'm not going to repeat it here. I just, I was just like, I don't even know where this speech is going. Like, perhaps it's not good with words, but I just don't feel like he put in that much effort. He could have just simply searched on Google, what should I say? But he didn't. And so I don't think he put in any effort, if you ask me. Now, Donovan talked about wanting to take Carmen on a trip to wherever he would, wherever she would like. And Carmen was like, you were sexy. You make me smile. You make my heart flutter. And then they kissed. And Carmen basically said yes to the trip. Do you know what I think about this couple? I think there is a lot of sexual energy. But I do not think it is going to end in a proper relationship. I just don't see it. I think if the infatuation goes on for longer, they'll probably continue for a while. But eventually, I just think it's I don't think it's a solid relationship. I think they're both messy. I think that they just need to get a room. And I have not really seen any substance to any of their conversations. It sounds like they're very, very surface level with each other and they are both just playing the game. So enjoy yourselves and, you know, just leave the rest of the bus out of your BS, okay? And that's that. I Altogether, I thought it was lackluster. I feel like I was expecting a little bit more, but... What is giving me such excitement is that the reunion looks like it's going to be good, honey. And I'm going to be covering that reunion for you guys. I'm going to be doing like little clips for you guys about the reunion. I'm so excited about it. Let me know if you guys want to see that. Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for listening and make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and tap that bell for notifications so you know every single time that I post. Your girl is out here doing her thing, so please support your girl, honey. And thank you for listening. Bye.